Hello, welcome back. Um, today we're going to learn how to evaluate a definite integral as a limit. So here the integral is uh, the integral of x squared plus 2 from 1 to 2. All right, so why don't we remember the definition of definite integral. So first we start with, with the function f on a closed interval. And then we take a partition of the closed interval a and b. Um, and we call it delta, and we look at the limit of the Riemann sums over that partition by this expression. The maximum of the lengths of each subinterval goes to zero, and we take the Riemann sum here. Um, let me just tell you one more thing about the, the norm of delta approaching zero. You take more points in the partition. When you take more points in the partition, um, that means you're letting n go to infinity. All right, so, so in other words, this, this limit is equivalent to saying that limit n goes to infinity of the sum i from 1 to n of f of ci delta xi. So anyway, if this limit exists, then we say that f is integrable on the closed interval a and b. And the limit is denoted by this integral notation. So integral from a to b of f of x dx. And this limit is called the definite integral of f from a to b. And we call a to be the lower limit and b to be the upper limit of integration. What we're going to do for our example is that we're going to take a partition of the given interval in the exercise. And then we're going to try to come up with the Riemann sum and then we're going to let uh, n go to infinity to come up with the value of the limit. Before we hit the row, let me show you the graphical outlook beforehand. So here is the blue curve, which is the f guy. This is us taking a partition of the interval 0, 2 uh, with only uh, three points, excluding the endpoints. So essentially, uh, we have five points together with the end points and we essentially construct rectangles either by using the left end points on each sub interval or right right end point of each sub interval which essentially means that let's say if you're on the sub interval then you can take the left end to start with and then f evaluated at the left end is this one so you're talking about this kind of rectangle here or if you choose the right end to start with then f evaluated at that point is this one. So you're talking about a larger rectangle. So either uh, you talk about an inscribed rectangle or subscribed rectangle to work with, or work with towards getting the Riemann sum. And if you get more points involved in the partition, that you're going to get more rectangles. Here we go. So let's use the notation of the definition of a definite integral. And we have the lower limit a to be 1 and upper limit b to be 2. And we're taking a partition here. We define a partition to be b minus a over n. So we are going with a partition where all the subintervals uh, have the same length. So this essentially means that the length of each subinterval, each subinterval, is equal to 1 over n. So in other words, in other words, since we have the interval 1 and 2, so this is the first element, uh, the left end. The next one is going to be 1 plus um, 1 over n. The second point in the list is going to be 1 plus 2 over n. And then this i node is going to be 1 plus i over n. And the n's node is going to be 1 plus n over n, which is exactly equal to 2. Okay, So this is our partition to start with. The question is that, are we going to go with the right end points or the left end points of the intervals to write down the rim and sum? So for this problem, why don't we go with the right end points of each sub interval so that I'm going to take ci's. ci is the point coming out of the i's sub interval to be 1 plus i over n. For example, from the first subinterval here, you're talking about c1. c1 is going to be 1 plus 1 over n. As you see, this is the left end, this is the right end. 
right hand point is the one that we pick for the first sub interval. And for the second sub interval, we're talking about C2. So that's going to be 1 plus 2 over n. Essentially, you're taking uh, the right end of the sub interval. So that means this integral is equal to, let me just continue from here, this integral is equal to the limit of delta norm approaching zero of the sum from one to n f of ci times delta xi. All right, as I said, delta xi is a constant, so I can call it like delta x. In fact, saying that the partition norm going to zero essentially means that you're letting delta x go to zero. So let's just rewrite this limit as delta x goes to zero of the sum i from one to n, f of one plus i over n times delta x i, but that's, that's constant delta x, which is one over n. As I just told you earlier, letting delta x go to zero is exactly the same as letting n go to infinity. So why don't we switch this limit to the limit as n goes to infinity, the sum i from one to n. So we need to evaluate f of one plus i over n. So let's check this function. So our function is x squared, x squared plus two. So essentially, I'm going to switch x to 1 plus i over n in the description of the function. And that's going to be this quantity squared plus 2 multiplying 1 over n is f of ci times delta x. All right, why don't we go ahead and expand this out? So this will be what? 3 over n. 2i over. All right, not, not only I expand it, but, but combine the like terms. So this is exactly what we had. 3 over n, 2i over n squared, and i squared over n cubed. All right, so we have to handle the sum. So why don't we split the sum into three pieces? Let me just point out something here. Um, here, the sum runs on i, which has nothing to do with uh, n. So whenever we see n or constant multiple here, we can always pull them out. For example, here I have 3 over n. I can write it as like 1 over n times the sum of 3. I can even pull out 3 and just put 1 here. So 3 over n pulled out completely, so it's the sum of 1, i from 1 to n. And the second term here is 2 over n squared times the sum of i. And the last one is 1 over n cubed, the sum of i squared. So the good news is that we know what those sums are from the previous section. So this is essentially equal to 3 over n times, so the sum i from 1 to n of 1, that means you're adding 1 n times to each other, right? That's n, okay? And here you're, you're taking the sum of the numbers from 1 to n, and we have a formula for that. That's equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. And eventually you're taking the sum of the squares of the numbers from 1 to n, and that is equal to n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1, all divided by 6. All right, let's simplify this. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 plus n, n plus 1 over, this is n squared, n squared. And this is n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 divided by 6 n cubed. All right, so now we're, we're, we're going back to the chapter uh, two business, taking the limit of this expression as n approaches infinity. Uh, and we had a theorem for that. Um, if the order of the bottom and the top are the same, then the, the limit of the rational expression is the, the ratio of the coefficients of the highest order terms at the top and the bottom. 
So well, this is the limit of constant, let's just carry that forward. But for this one, this is equal to n squared plus n. So the coefficient of the highest term is one, and the coefficient of the highest term in the bottom is one as well. And if you expand this out, you will see that the highest order term is gonna be two n cubed plus the tail, you can check that, okay? So the coefficient of the highest order term is two and six here, so this is two over six. And then if you add them up, uh, you can get 13 over three uh, to be the value of uh, the definite integral of x squared plus two from one to two. All right, let me just say a few words about the graphical outlook here. Remember that our CIs, the point CIs were the right and points. For example, for, for the partition having only five points in it, so we are talking about this rectangle here, uh, this rectangle here, and this rectangle here, and this rectangle here. And if you increase the number of points in the partition, so you're gonna have more rectangles coming in. And what we did in the analysis in, the, in, a, in a few minutes ago, that we let n go to infinity, essentially meaning that we were trying to increase the number of points in the partition, so we get closer and closer to the area between the curve and the x-axis is you see that uh, when you go with those like uh, rectangles here, so the difference here, so this is, these are extra areas added, uh, added to the actual area that we're after. So those areas tend to, the sum of those areas tend to zero, that eventually spits out the value of the integral, which was 13 over three. All right, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put down the video. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. I'll see you in another video. Bye.